Hey everyone, this is Nick, and if you thought that Nextcloud was only for file storage, then stick around, because here are 16 applications that I use for Nextcloud every day to run my channel, the podcast, the website, and everything else. Nextcloud is now basically my replacement to Google Docs or Office 365, but less privacy invasive. You can install all these applications in one click straight from Nextcloud's Hype library. And of course, if you use something that is not mentioned in this video on your own Nextcloud server, well, don't hesitate to let me know down there in the comments. And I won't hesitate to let you know about today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Tuxcare, and you probably already heard about Alma Linux, the enterprise-grade replacement for CentOS. It's free, it's one-to-one, -one, binary compatible with Red Hat Enterprise, it's managed by the community, and it's backed financially by Tuxcare. Well, they're now introducing their commercial support for Alma Linux, called Alma Care. It gives you 16 years of support, live patching, FIPS compliance, and a lot more, so you can run Alma Linux in any mission-critical environment. And if you want to learn more about that, they're running a webinar on March 1st, to explain all the features and how it works. So if you already run Alma Linux or if you're just interested in it, then click the link in the description and book your slots to attend the webinar. Okay, let's begin with one that is absolutely crucial to everything that I do and that is Nextcloud News. News is an RSS feed reader and I know RSS is old and maybe you never even used it before but it's still the single best way of gathering the news that you care about without any algorithm deciding what you will actually see. An RSS reader is simply a place where you gather feeds that list new articles from websites that you decided to include. And that reader lets you browse these articles, read them in the reader itself, or access the original website if you prefer. Nextcloud News lets you import an already existing list of feeds, or you can create one by adding the websites you like, one by one. It supports folders, so you can sort your feeds by categories, and if a website doesn't actually have an RSS feed button, you can still just copy-paste its URL, and News can auto-discover the feed for you and add the website anyway. Serves them right for ignoring old but very useful tech. You don't have a feed? Yes, you do. Oh, and by the way, you can also add any YouTube channel URL and Nextcloud News will auto-detect all new videos so you can watch them straight from your reader without having to contend with the YouTube algorithm. On top of that, News lets you export your feed list. It lets you navigate using the J and K keys of your keyboard to scroll through articles. And if you don't like the web interface, you can even use another app that plugs into Nextcloud, like Newsflash on GNOME, for example. It is an absolutely integral part of the way I work and the way I gather all the news that I talk about in the Linux news videos or in the podcast. Next app is Notes. And I know it's a basic one, but it's also a super important part of my workflow. All my scripts and articles are written in Nextcloud Notes before they make it onto my website or as a video. Notes is very simple. You just get basic markdown support for titles, you get bold and italic, and section headers, and that's about it. It has an edit mode and a view mode for when you want that markdown syntax to fade away, and it lets you place your notes into categories for a bit more organization. Nextcloud also supports versioning for these notes, so you will always be able to go back to an earlier draft if you want. And the cool thing is that all these notes are individual markdown files, which means that if you sync them to your desktop using the Nextcloud desktop client, you can open them with any text editor. And they're also portable if you ever decide to leave Nextcloud. I personally use IOTAS as my note-taking app. It's a very simple GNOME application that uses your Nextcloud online account, if it's been added to your GNOME settings, and that auto-syncs with Nextcloud regularly. On mobile, there are plenty of options. On iOS, I use Cloud Notes, and on Android, I use the aptly named Nextcloud Notes app. It is a very useful little app. It might be too bare bones for you if what you need is more than just simple, basic, plain text, but for my needs, it's perfect. It's fast, it syncs everywhere, and I can take my notes on any devices. If your notes needs are more along the lines of a wiki or a knowledge base, then Nextcloud Collectives is also interesting. I started using it a few months ago to outline what I wanted out of my new website that I'm working on. And it's basically a leaner, faster version of something like Confluence. It lets you create collectives, lets others collaborate and edit them, 
And they support more advanced syntax than the basic Notes app with images or emojis. You can create templates, pages, subpages, you can view page outlines or add links from one page to the other. It is pretty powerful. Unfortunately, there are no mobile apps to access your content from outside of the web interface. But still, if that's not an issue for you, Collectives is an absolutely perfect choice. For task management, I use Nextcloud Tasks and Nextcloud Deck. These two are how I organize my work week and the whole publication calendar for the month. Tasks let you create multiple lists and multiple tasks per list, with support for tags, start dates, due dates, priorities, and even completion percentage or current status. Each task can have notes added to it, and you can turn a task into a subtask by simple drag and drop. You can also star your tasks to make them easier to find. Now to access them on my computer, I just use Endeavor, the application, not the distribution. Endeavor auto-syncs with my GNOME online accounts and automatically grabs all my tasks and lists and lets me interact with it without using a web interface. It doesn't support all the features of Nextcloud Tasks just yet, but it's still super handy. The only thing that's missing from Nextcloud Tasks, in my opinion, is recurring tasks. As in, you create a task and when you tick it off, it automatically creates another one for the next day, the next week, the next month. This support is not in yet and it kind of sucks. To access my tasks on mobile, on iOS, I just use the Apple Reminders app, which integrates with any CalDAV task list, which Nextcloud Tasks is. On Android, you have Open Tasks, for example, that does the same thing. As per Nextcloud Deck, it piggybacks off of tasks, but it places them in boards that you can customize with all the columns you want, and it supports the same tags and the same properties for each task as Nextcloud Tasks, so you can have a more graphical view of what you have to do. This one I use for planning my month and my publication schedule, as it gives me a bird's eye view of what I need to do and what I need to prepare in advance. Deck has iOS and Android mobile apps, and you can also just access it from the web browser, which is what I generally do, although I would be perfectly okay with a desktop client for GNOME if one existed. Next one is Nextcloud Passwords. It's a password manager with the benefit of being self-hosted on your Nextcloud server, so it's less likely to be affected by a wide data breach, like the one that happened to LastPass recently. It will be as safe as your Nextcloud server is, basically. It has a web interface to browse your passwords, but you will really just want to use the browser extensions for Firefox or any Chrome-based browser. It will auto-detect passwords when you enter them, so you can save them, you can edit the credentials, or add a new password manually. It can generate a password for you, and that's about all you needed to do. I couldn't make the extension become the autofill provider inside of Firefox, which is kind of annoying, but on mobile, the Nextcloud Passwords app can be set as your autofill provider on iOS or on Android, so you're all set. And now that everyone knows that I store my passwords in my Nextcloud server, I guess I have to delete them all and use something else, just to be safe. Another small app I use every day is External Sites. It's super simple, it just lets you add shortcuts to other websites inside your Nextcloud menu, and it will open these websites in an iframe directly from your Nextcloud interface. I personally added my podcast website so I can check statistics and manage the episodes from Nextcloud instead of having to open yet another browser tab. It should work with most websites, unless the website you want to access has decided it does not allow it to be accessed from another website, which is the case for my accounting software and that sucks. Oh well, I guess I just won't be doing any accounting then. Kind of useless, isn't it? Onto my office suite, which is only Office. Nextcloud has a connector to let you plug an office suite directly to your Nextcloud server. I went for only Office, and it lets me create new documents straight from the Nextcloud Files app and edit existing ones from the web interface on any computer I want. You do need to have an only Office document server running somewhere, which is what I do. I have a dedicated Linode instance for that. And then you just configure the URL for this document server in your Nextcloud settings, and you're good to go, as long as the document server is secured with an HTTPS certificate. 
OnlyOffice is pretty cool and has all the features I need, but you could also go for Collabora if you prefer. They generally have the same feature set, more or less. It is basically my replacement for Google Docs or Office 365. It gives me the exact same feature set, the exact same convenience, plus I have desktop apps that can plug into my Nextcloud instance and no weird company is trying to push me to upgrade to anything or is selling my data. Now, a smaller app, but a nice one nonetheless, is Custom Menu. It's one I use to make my long list of Nextcloud apps more manageable on the web interface. What it does is basically give you complete control over how your menu works. You get a second list of applications that you can interact with, with a new menu button in the top left corner. And you get to pick which apps go in that sidebar menu and which go in your header. So it's easier to have access to the apps you use the most in the top bar and still retain access to everything else in the sidebar. You can also pick which apps will open in a new browser tab if you prefer that behavior instead of replacing the current app you have open inside of the web interface. And you can change the sorting order of applications as well. Simple but very useful if you use a lot of Nextcloud features. It just helps keep things legible. Another small app I use is Mastodon integration. It lets me add my Mastodon feed or mentions onto my Nextcloud dashboard so I can see if I have any important messages waiting for me right when I open Nextcloud. It can also be said to have a link to your Mastodon instance straight from your Nextcloud menu. Although since it opens in a new tab, I guess it would be better to just add your Mastodon instance as an external website like I showed earlier. And if you prefer that, there's also the same kind of integration, but for Twitter, but with the nice bonus of having the fragrance of a dumpster fire added onto it for more realism. Now, pretty run of the mill, but the next ones are contacts and calendar. All my contacts are hosted on Nextcloud and so are my calendars. They plug in nicely on the desktop with GNOME's online accounts, so I can access them without having to open a web browser. And on mobile, well, it's just CardDAV and CardsDAV, so any good mobile operating system will have access to that and will let you auto-sync both contacts and calendars from your phone to your Nextcloud server and vice versa. Again, simple replacement for Google Calendar or Outlook.com. I have everything in one place, it's self-hosted, and it's more private. Okay, now this one I don't really use every day, but I still use it relatively often. It's Nextcloud Forms. It's basically like Google Forms in that it lets you create surveys easily with multiple question types, single or multiple answers, long form text fields, and more. And it lets you publish a public link to that survey so people can answer it. After that, you get to see all the results in a single page, or you can view each form individually. It's very handy to collect some feedback, as I've done in the past for my Patreon perks, and as I plan to do soon for collecting your votes on a Distro Awards video that I will be working on. Simple, easy to use, free of charge, and non-privacy invasive. Unless you decide to ask people that answer your form to give you private information, in which case you're doing the privacy invasion. That's neat! I also use Nextcloud Photos every day. It's progressed a ton in the last version of Nextcloud and now supports albums, editing your photos, sharing them with other people, and it can even auto-recognize faces in your various pictures so you can tag them and find them more easily. I auto-upload all my pictures from my phone to my Nextcloud server with a general Nextcloud app for iOS and Android, and I can just sync these photos back to my computer thanks to the desktop client for Nextcloud. Albums you create in the web interface of Nextcloud Photos don't sync back to your mobile phone or to your desktop. Unfortunately, it's not creating folders where your photos will automatically be moved, which is kind of bad, but I just don't use that kind of feature because I'm terrible at organizing photos anyway. And of course, I can't end the video without talking about the Files app, the core feature of Nextcloud that I use basically every day to save what I work on, to edit what I already created, and more. It's very robust with the ability to move, copy, paste, favorite your files and folders. You can share them inside or outside of Nextcloud. You can edit them with your Office suite if you have one linked into Nextcloud. And of course, it auto-syncs with the Nextcloud desktop client and you can access everything from the Nextcloud mobile app for iOS and Android. 
It also supports versioning, so you can go back if anything goes wrong. Generally, my use case is just creating the file on the computer I'm working on, and it will just auto-sync with Nextcloud and be downloaded onto all my other devices. But I also use the sharing feature to share my weekly patron cast with YouTube members, for example, or to send sponsored mentions to the various sponsors so they can check everything is okay before I add these mentions to a video. And this should about cover it. These are the applications that help me run and manage my YouTube channel, my podcast, my website, and basically every stupid administrative task that I have to do to run this very company. Of course, if you use anything else, don't hesitate to let me know down in the comments. Always happy to learn about new stuff. And I'm always happy to tell you about our sponsor. If it's time for you to buy a new computer and you plan to run Linux on it, stop looking at Windows devices and researching online whether they're compatible or not. Just buy something that actually supports Linux from today's sponsor, Tuxedo. They have a huge range of devices that should cover every need and every price point. Every device has tons of choice for the CPU, the GPU, the RAM, the SSD, and you can even customize them further with your own keyboard layout engraved on the keys of your laptop or your own logo engraved on the lid of your laptop. They're really solid. Some models come in multiple colors depending on your preferences, and you can even open them, repair them, and upgrade them. So if you need a new computer, Stop buying Windows computers, buy a Linux one from Tuxedo. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications or to write a comment. And if you didn't like the video, well, the dislike button still sorta works. And if you really enjoy what I do and you want to support the channel, there are plenty of links down there for Patreon, for YouTube memberships, both of them get access to special weekly perks. And you can also just donate on PayPal or click the super thanks button. You decide. All my socials are also down there, including the new podcast for the Linux news. So thanks everyone for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.